Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for today's fiscal 24 CIP annual report. So this is going to be a short video on how to uh, complete this report by the deadline. Uh, so first off, we want to go ahead and talk about some of the uh, more significant changes uh, that we've made to the year end compliance requirements uh, requirements. So first off, the SMU data arts requirement is no longer uh, required. Um, so instead, we are having uh, all CIP grantees uh, simply report on their most uh, recently completed fiscal year by uploading either their form 990 or their 990EZ um, into the final report, which we'll, which we'll show you all in a moment. Uh, however, uh, the reports that you have submitted over the years are still available uh, to you through the SMU Data Arts platform and um, in case any of you are interested um, in having access to those as well. So for most organizations, uh, as part of the annual report, we will be asking for your fiscal 23 990 or 990 EZ. In case you have forgotten, um, there is a new uh, tab within your organizational profile that will let you know which fiscal year uh, we are requiring from you. Um, this tab will also uh, let you know the date where in which we've reviewed the annual report and have marked it as uh, complete, so essentially have approved it. Uh, and then lastly, it'll also let you know when your final year will be um, in terms of receiving uh, your existing CIP portfolio grant. And that will also be your cue, letting you know when you'll be eligible to apply to the new uh, operating support for organizations grant program. So to remain eligible to receive your current CIP um, grant awards, you'll have to attest to the following, and all of these points are actually um, existing. None of them are actually new, so they have all been uh, part of the final report process. So organizations still need to have an active 501c3 uh, nonprofit status with the IRS and with the Secretary of the Commonwealth, the SOC. Um, they also have to meet our definition of, of fully cultural. They also have to have public programming uh, in Massachusetts and uh, year round operations. They also have to go ahead and have and identify um, an individual within the organization serving as their accessibility coordinator. They have to credit uh, the Mass Cultural Council. And lastly, they have to remain compliant with all state and federal anti discrimination laws. And lastly, some organizations will also need to complete a federal funds report uh, due by July 14th of 24. These same organizations will have to uh, also answer additional sections within uh, the annual report, which are required by the NEA, the National Endowment for the Arts. Um, now, at this point, we're going to transition and we will do a walkthrough of how to sign in and access the final report and we'll show you and talk through each of the questions that we will be asking. So this is the homepage to log into your account within our grant management system. Uh, so first you'll want to go ahead and enter the email address associated with your user account and then password. If it's been a while and perhaps you have forgotten it, you could simply click this on uh, forgot password button uh, to go ahead and receive that automated forgot password email to reset it and then log in. If uh, you do not have one, let's say there has been a transition in roles um, and you need to go ahead and create one, uh, feel free to reach out to CIP staff and we'd be uh, more than happy to uh, help create one for you and give you access uh, to the platform. So once you log in, this will be the home page to the platform. You'll see welcome and then your first and last name here. And before we even access the report, the first thing that we want all of you to do is go ahead and click on your organizational profile. Um, we're gonna go through each of these tabs here, but first off, you're gonna see the organizational address um, of your organization. If any of this information needs to be updated, uh, feel free to go ahead and, and update that information. Click on the save button uh, each and every time you do make changes to any of these fields here. Um, this city tab, unfortunately, you don't have access um, to change. So in the event where that does need to be updated, uh, you can go ahead and reach out to CIP staff and we can go ahead and make that update for you. Uh, for this first tab here, so this is going to be concerning the additional address information associated with your account. Uh, all of this information you can go ahead and change if there's a separate mailing address. Uh, you can simply go ahead and say yes here to populate that information there. 
Uh, next, in the About section, this mission statement is actually going to be populated within your final report. Um, and we're going to be asking you if this is, in fact, your, your, your mission statement. If it has changed uh, since last year, this is going to be the area where you can go ahead and, and make that change. Um, and as you scroll down, again, if there's any information that has been updated, feel free uh, to go ahead and make those edits as well. For the staff contact tab, this section will let you know the individual Mass Cultural Council staff member on the organization's team who is your point of contact. So any questions, any issues you have throughout this process, feel free to reach out to the individual who is populated in this tab. Next, we have the CIP portfolio information. Um, so here you're going to get three important bits of information. This first section here is informing you of the the last uh, fiscal year where you will be receiving your organization will be receiving a CIP grant. Um, for those of you where who it says um, FY24, this means that you are ready or will soon be receiving your your final grant, which means you are also eligible to apply for the and we encourage you to do so. Uh, to the new operating uh, grants for organizations uh, program. Down here, fiscal year reported on. Again, most organizations will be reporting on the fiscal 23 um, expenses. Um, however, um, if it's for fiscal 22, for a handful of you, it'll be noted here. And then lastly, once uh, CIP staff review and approve um, the your final report, this is a where it says please select here it'll either say uh, yes or no informing you or letting you know that we've uh, approved uh, your final report. And for this next tab here, uh, the organization contact information, so this tab is auto populated within your final report and within the final report you're simply uh, asked you're going to be asked to confirm that the individuals assigned to these four roles are uh, the same and if they're not this is where you would go to update this information so first we're asking uh, for the individual serving as the organization's executive director second um, the person who's going to be responsible for managing the the specific uh, managing the specific cip uh, grant the individual serving as the organization's accessibility coordinator and lastly the individual who's uh, responsible for ensuring that the organization adheres to mass cultural councils um, essentially the credit and publicity agreement um, that's written within the grant contract. And in many cases, um, organizations, especially smaller organizations, they'll have the same individual listed in all four roles, and that's completely fine. Now, once you've gone through your organizational profile and have updated all of the fields that needed to be updated, again, each and every time you do that, click on the Save button at the bottom of the screen. Once you're done going through each uh, section of your organizational profile, go back to the, uh, click on the home button to go back uh, to the home page to then access the final report. Okay, so from the home page, you'll want to go ahead and scroll down. Uh, below requires attention, you'll see pending reports. Click there. And this is the area where uh, all of your final reports will be. Um, there'll be an open button right over here. And once you click that, um, it'll take you to the first page of the annual report. All right, so once you access the final report, it'll look something like this. Uh, you will have a report summary button. So if you want to export the entire uh, report into a PDF, uh, you can go ahead and click on there to go ahead and do that. So in this first tab here, the participation and attendance tab, you'll want to go ahead and enter uh, your attendance numbers uh, from this time period here. So July uh, 1st of 23, all the way through uh, June 30th of, of 24. Uh, because many of you will be submitting this at some point in May, um, estimated numbers will suffice um, if you have future events planned in say June. So in this section here, you'll first wanna go ahead and enter your audience data that's uh, for in-person uh, programming that you had done in the event that you did hold uh, some in-person programs but there was a digital or a remote um, component to that still go ahead and factor those folks who may have tuned in um, as well in that in that particular uh, capacity for digital attendees this is really only if you as an example if you held uh, let's say a book talk uh, entirely on Zoom and everyone who participated uh, did so uh, virtually. In, for events like that, uh, this is where you would wanna go ahead and enter um, your audience data there. 
And then this last section here is automatically tallying all, all of the information that you enter above. So once you enter that, go ahead and click on the Save Draft button and then proceed to the next tab. These are what we talked about in the PowerPoint earlier. So you are reading through these uh, each of these bullet points, none of which are new, um, and affirming and attesting to the fact that they are still uh, in place. And to go ahead and do that, simply check the uh, I Confirm button. Then you could either click through the tabs here or click on the next button to go to the following tab. And as I mentioned previously, so uh, these four roles are being auto-populated from the information that is within your organizational profile. So if any of these contacts have moved on and there are new individuals, um, you'll need to go back to your organizational profile to update this information. And then it should be uh, auto-populated here correctly. If it is correct as is, simply drop down this menu to yes and then proceed to the next tab. For the organizational review, for the organizational review tab, uh, the first question here, it pertains to the purpose of for the CIP grant. So this content is actually being uh, auto-populated from last year's submitted annual reports. So you can't ed um, edit it um, directly. It's not within your uh, organizational profile as an example, but if it is correct, um, simply drop down to yes. If it needs to be updated, you'll be given the opportunity to make that update. And the next question is asking you to confirm the your board, your organization's board approved mission statement. If what is populated here is correct, uh, same thing, simply drop it to yes. Um, if not, indicate no, and then it, reach out to the uh, to CIP staff, the one who you've been assigned to, um, to inform them. Uh, in most cases, you could simply email your CIP uh, program officer contact with your uh, board approved mission statement, and we can go ahead and update uh, that for you on the back end. Um, then shifting into programming again here you'll have a text box that has your core programming if and only if what is being populated here needs to be changed then enter all of your organization's core programming uh, in this box if everything um, that is being populated up top here is correct then do not enter any content um, in some cases what has happened is it you know in years past some organizations might put uh, you know four different uh, bullet points pertaining to their core programming but now they want to add an additional two in a situation like that you want to take the original four plus the additional two that you'd like to add to it and then just put all six here uh, not just the new bits of information but essentially rewrite that uh, core programming to be reflective of what was included versus what is new um, and then again, once um, just a best practice as you're kind of going through the annual report, um, always click on the save draft button. For the contract information tab, this, uh, this section is essential for the grant contracting process. So there's uh, essentially kind of two categories here. First, you're going to be identifying the individual within your organization who can serve as the uh, what we used to call the castle, the contract authorized signatory uh, listing. So this authorized signatory is essentially the person within the organization who has uh, the legal authority to sign contracts on behalf of the organization. So you'll be entering that individual here. And then for the second part, you're going to be entering the individual uh, who can serve as the organization's contract authorized officer. And this essentially is uh, a, a person within the organization who can uh, who essentially has the authority to attest that the above individual can sign contracts on behalf of the organization. And here we do provide examples of who can serve in that capacity. Um, if and it, it does has to be it does have to be a second uh, person. So these should be two separate uh, people. Um, some situations that we've seen in the past is uh, an organization will identify two people, but they'll put the same email address, a shared email address, as an example. Um, we do recommend using two. However, if you want to use uh, the same email address, do note that that email address will be receiving separate uh, actionable emails pertaining to the authorized signatory uh, versus uh, separate emails that would be pertaining to the contract authorized officer. 
And again, once uh, you enter this information here, simply save draft. The next tab is the CIP financial documentation tab. And the first question here, you're gonna go ahead and select the end date for your most recently completed fiscal year. And again, for most organizations, that's gonna be for their fiscal 23 fiscal year. And for the next question here, um, we are asking if your most recently completed fiscal year is a non 12 month fiscal year, which should uh, be reflective of, of a small uh, group of organization. If it is, simply explain um, the reason uh, for it being a non 12 month fiscal year. Most of you, however, will be able to enter no uh, for that question. And here, uh, this is how you'll be able to, by clicking browse files, you can go ahead and upload your form 990 or your 990EZ for your most recently completed fiscal year only. We only need um, either the 990 or the 990EZ. We don't need any additional Schedule O, B, uh, things of that nature. All those additional schedules, we don't need uh, those uh, forms, just the original form. And this next question here, the cultural affiliate financial report, this is only pertaining to cultural affiliates, uh, nonprofit organizations that have their own uh, 990 or 990 EZs and who have uploaded them uh, do not have to complete this financial report here. Again, this is only for cultural affiliates. Uh, for cultural affiliates, by clicking this box, a separate pop-up will appear and it'll look exactly um, like this cultural affiliate financial report. So you'll be uh, able to enter the expenses and the income associated um, with, with, with you as the cultural affiliate um, and the total tabs, the total expenses and total income are um, automated um, section. So it'll be able to tally uh, those numbers for you. And once you're done entering the information within the final report, uh, save that. And once you do, it'll be reflective uh, in this section here, just as you, as you can see here. And then for this last question, uh, again, now this is kind of going back um, to uh, nonprofit organizations. So for your most recently completed fiscal year, we are asking you if you also served as a fiscal sponsor or fiscal agent for any other programs. Uh, so reason being is, if there are operating expenses within your 990 that are not your expenses, that they really are um, for another uh, unincorporated group for whom you may have been serving uh, as a fiscal sponsor, this will be your opportunity to, um, to essentially let us know. And if you did serve as a fiscal sponsor um, for any groups uh, within your most recently completed fiscal year, uh, these are the questions pertaining uh, to that that you can address as well. For the financial reporting tab, you're going to be answering these questions uh, from the time frame beginning on July 1st of 2023 all the way June, uh, through June 30th of 24. Uh, because many of you will be completing this uh, annual report at some point in May, um, we do understand that many of these questions, uh, there will be an aspect of, of estimation and that's completely fine. So the first question here, um, and again, these questions are also uh, coming from the NEA, the National Endowment uh, for the Arts. Um, so the first question here, uh, you'll be, uh, you're will be you being asked to enter the total fees paid to artists, again, within this uh, timeline here. And then essentially all of your other expenses uh, within that time frame, And it's gonna go ahead and calculate what you enter within those first two boxes there. And then for these uh, next two questions, uh, just the total cash uh, that your organization received, uh, both earned and earn, uh, unearned uh, revenue within that time frame. And then here, you'll also be able to um, enter the in-kind contributions that you received during that time frame. This next tab, there's no information that you have to enter. This is simply just an FYI. Um, if the BIPOC-centered self-identification uh, definition does apply to your organization and you have not yet uh, completed uh, this form, we definitely encourage you uh, to do so. Um, but that's it. Uh, other than that, uh, this, is, uh, this tab is simply serving as an FYI. For the NEA details tab, uh, most CIP grantees won't even see this uh, tab in particular. It's really going to be only uh, to the organizations who are receiving federal funding. 
Uh, so again, in most cases, uh, you won't even see this tab. For those of you who do, it's because you are receiving federal funds. Uh, these questions are, are pretty straightforward and they're coming straight from the NEA, the National Endowment um, for the Arts. Um, and there is a separate uh, federal funds report um, that you'll have to complete as well if you do see this NEA details tab within your uh, final report. Now for the NEA activity location uh, information tab, every uh, all CIP grantees will see uh, this tab. So it, for this question in particular, uh, it is asking if all of the major activities that are being supported by your CIP grant, uh, essentially to list activities uh, at most five that are taking place outside of the grantees address. So organizations uh, such as art centers or art schools or any organizations that have their own venue where let's say all the pro of their programming is taking place there would likely uh, address this question as a no. For performing groups, uh, on the other hand, who might not have their own venue, that they're doing performances uh, in many different parts of, of the state or across New England, what have you, uh, a question like this, uh, they might answer yes to. And then once they do, you'll see this enter venue details uh, button pop up. Once you click on it, a separate pop up will uh, appear and then you'll just enter at most uh, five uh, locations uh, pertaining to, again, the major activities that are being supported by your uh, CIP grant. And again, these questions are also uh, pertaining to that time frame from July 1st, 2023 uh, through June 30th of 2024. The additional information tab, this is uh, essentially an opportunity to let us know what other types of essentially things that you have going on that might make you eligible for some of our other organization-based grant programs. For example, we're asking uh, whether organizations um, own or have a long-term lease on a building. This might make you eligible uh, for some of our cultural facilities fund grant programs. Next, we're asking essentially for any youth arts type um, education programming that you might be running that might make you eligible for some of our creative youth development uh, grants. And then lastly, these performing arts and touring shows uh, or artists uh, sections pertain to uh, our gaming mitigation program. So perhaps you might be eligible to receive funding uh, through those programs. Uh, so then at this point, you can simply just go ahead and click on the submit button and you'll be all set.